Some transfers go absolutely swimmingly and others are pretty terrible. So today I'm going to look at seven players who may be regretting their recent transfer. First off, and it's Donny van der Beek, and the reason why is because he sat on the bench at Manchester United, and I just do not understand. I mean, if he was sat on the bench after moving from Ajax, where he was an absolute legend, because the team were doing so well, he had brilliant players in front of him who were producing performances week in, week out, and he just couldn't get into the team, then maybe he could understand it. But that is not the case. United are struggling, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is struggling, and the players on the pitch are doing well sometimes and very, very poorly other times. This kind of consistency surely leads Van der Beek to think, you know what, I'm going to get my chance. But no, he just sits on the bench and gets the odd 10 minutes here and there. Surely, and I know it's early days, he'll be slightly regretting the fact that he could have moved elsewhere when now he's just becoming an absolute bench warmer. It's not what you want to see because we all know that he's an insanely talented midfielder. There's no wonder that United paid around £40 million for him because of what he did at Ajax. But now they need to see a return on the pitch, but he needs to get on the pitch in the first place. In my opinion, it looks like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer may leave before we see Van der Beek get a starting run of games in the team. Next up, and it's Christian Eriksen. And for those of you Spurs fans out there, you would have known that this one was coming as soon as he said he wanted to leave. He pretty much down tools at Tottenham in the last year and a half, moved to Inter Milan, where it's clear he does not have the mentality to produce at the top level for the big teams in the biggest games. Here we are, less than a year later from his January transfer and the chief executive at Inter Milan has already said that he can leave the club in January. I mean come back to this video in a few months time and I bet you will find Christian Eriksen is not at Inter Milan anymore. It's weird because when he's on his game you can still see that he's a good player it's just clear that Antonio Conte doesn't trust him. Personally if I was an Antonio Conte I would have thought that if Jose Mourinho is happy to let him go then not gonna sign him onto a new contract so it's clear that he wants to leave then maybe just maybe he's not really a good fit for Antonio's Conte side either they've got plenty of creative attacking talents they've got plenty of goal scorers they've got plenty of people who can provide them with assists so why do they go and need Christian Eriksen I'm not really sure it's the smartest move in the first place and I think both he and the club are definitely regretting it now moving on and it's Mariano Diaz I, I, this is just one thing I do not understand and it seems to happen all the time with Barcelona and Real Madrid they insert buyback clauses into a player's contract whenever they're sold and the second they make a bid after a player has one good season they come running back like a really desperate ex-girlfriend I just don't get it Mariano Diaz went to Lyon he had a fantastic season 18 goals him Nabil Fekir Memphis Depay were doing brilliantly everything was looking absolutely fine and then he went running back to Real after just one year and now, in those last three years, sorry, two years, he's had 20 league appearances. That's it. I mean, he's come back, he was given the number seven shirt, right, after Cristiano Ronaldo departed, and has done nothing with it. Aiden Hazard's the new big name on the block now. Karen Benzema still can't be displaced on the first team, and Diaz is just sitting on the bench doing absolutely nothing. So much so, the last summer they brought in Luka Jovic, effectively reducing him to third choice striker. And yeah, I just, that really is something I don't understand. He might have love for Real Madrid, he was a youth player there and certainly he's come back to the club where he's picking up a massive pay packet and I'm sure he'll be happy with that but in footballing terms surely he's regretting the fact that he is not playing regular football. Next up and talking of Real Madrid, one of their loanee signings may be regretting moving to Borussia Dortmund and that is Jesus Renier. Now surely Surely, it would have been a good move when it was first put to him. Two years at Dortmund, following the footsteps of the likes of Ashraf Hakimi. They're a team who loves to play youngsters, who are giving chances to absolutely everybody, but somehow, the guy just can't get minutes on the pitch. And when he does, it's often just a very few. The thing is with Dortmund, <laughs> I find this quite an odd situation. They sign good players, right, in their prime years. The likes of Julian Brandt, Torgan Hazard. They've still got Marco Royce there, who's absolutely brilliant. And they sign fantastic youngsters. Haaland, Bellingham, Gio Reyna, they've just given a debut to Mokoko as well. The thing is that no matter how young you are, like in the case of Jesus Renier being 17 years old, there's always going to be someone younger that Dortmund give a chance to. Or once he's established himself in the team, like Gio Reyna, well, there's not really much hope for Renier. Having just moved there, of course, there is time for things to turn around, but he has apparently said, and the club have said, that if things don't change, they'll have to reevaluate the transfer in January. That's pretty bad news after only being three months in to a two-year loan. 
Imagine what the Dortmund side would look like in two years when these youngsters they're giving chances to now have got two years worth of experience and they're absolutely unbelievable. And on top of this, they'll probably have like another 16 year old that they've signed from somewhere who's an absolute wonder kid as well. Things aren't looking so good for the Brazilian. Next up to the Premier League with Danny Drinkwater, who most definitely regrets his Chelsea move. There is no doubt in my mind. In 2017, he signed for the club had an okay first season. Under Mauricio Sarri in 2018 19 didn't play a single game. In the 2019-20 season, went on loan to Burnley and Aston Villa and made a combined five appearances. And now he's been left out of the Premier League squad altogether for this season. I mean, in terms of winning the league with Leicester to where he is now, that is a serious downward curve. Yes, he has admitted that he needs to get his career back on track and could even play abroad, but honestly, Trace it back to the move he made from Leicester to Chelsea. And yeah, that's really not the smartest career decision he's made. At the time, I don't necessarily blame him. But maybe, just maybe, having looked at the fact that Chelsea have bought in and got rid of so many players on such a quick turnaround, he should have had a second thought about making the move. Next up, and it's William Saliba, and I can't quite figure this one out. Arsenal signed him last summer, gave him a year, another year, at his boyhood club, St Etienne. That one makes sense. He came back in the summer, Arsenal have got some defensive problems, and some of the players really aren't good enough. So you would have thought he'd be in the first team. Absolutely not. Arteta wants to get him out on loan. He's not in the Europa League squad. He's not in the Premier League squad. I'm just not quite sure why they brought him in if they were going to just send him out on loan again, especially when it's so clear that Arsenal need better defenders. When they play five at the back, they're shoving Kieran Tierney, who's a left back, into that left centre back role sometimes. I'm not quite sure the likes of Mustafi and David Luiz and Socrates and all the others are quite up to being the defenders that Arsenal thought they were. In fact, Gabriel seems to be the only one who's a solid performer. Rob Holding has his performances as well. But you really would have thought that Saliba, with all the hype and the fact they spent 30 million on him, you'd thought that he would get at least some game time at Arsenal. Obviously, Mikel Arteta thinks he's not ready, but I'm not so sure whether or not Saliba will be completely happy with his move to North London at the moment. And finally, lastly but not least, it's someone that Arsenal actually linked with in the summer, and it's Justin Cliver. Same thing as Donny van der Beek recently. When he came through at Ajax, my God, he took the league by storm. Yes, he's playing at the strongest club in a rather weak league. Having said that, you would have expected a little bit more from him. There are plenty of players who have left Ajax and gone on to prove that they're top, top players. He went to Roma, but things didn't quite happen. And now he's on a one-year loan deal at Leipzig and he's barely getting any minutes. A sub appearance here, a sub appearance there, no goals, no assists, and all of the potential that he had seems to be waning away. And the problem with this is that when he goes back to Roma at the end of the season, no one's going to pay any sort of money for him. He's just consistently going to go through loan deal after loan deal until he has one good season, which convinces some club to buy him off Roma for a lot of money, or he does well enough that Roma think he can come back into the first team. At the moment, it looks like neither is happening, and really, maybe he's not even regretting the move to Leipzig. Maybe he's regretting the move to Roma in the first place. Hopefully though for him things will turn around and we can see him fill some of that early potential we saw in Holland. So there's seven players who I think are regretting their transfers. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Check out the rest of the stuff we've got going on at OneFootball and until next time I'll see you guys later.